Hey, this is Trace. This is one of my flute racks. I made this one to hold all of my recording quality bamboo flutes. And to earn its place on this rack, it has to be the best flute in its key in my collection. Once they are here, they never leave the studio until I find one that sounds better. My signature flute is a seven-hold D minor flute. These are the flutes I play the most. Recently, I've been working with this C major flute from the rack. But I know I've added better sounding C majors to my collection since this one earned its spot. And they're waiting right there. So in this video, I'm going to take you along with me as I choose the replacement C major flute for my studio rack. And at the same time, it's the perfect opportunity for me to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Let's start with the basics. The transverse or side blown flute is essentially a tube plugged at one end with a mouth hole and finger holes. But when it comes to good sounding concert pitched flutes, it all boils down to one thing, math. The shape, length, width, and wall thickness of the tube, as well as the placement, shape, and sizes of the holes determine a flute's key and greatly affect its tone throughout its entire frequency range. With synthetic materials and manufacturing processes, these parameters can be controlled and duplicated from flute to flute. However, with handmade flutes, using natural materials, the key word is variation. Since bamboo is a natural material, there is almost always significant variation in its wall thickness, diameter, and shape between its segments throughout its entire length. This is where the flute maker comes in. What they do is compensate for these variances by making adjustments to the sizes and placements of the mouth and finger holes as well as other dimensions to get their flutes to play in tune. And here is an example of this. These are all C major flutes made by the same flute maker, standing on end next to each other. Notice the variation in the widths of the bamboo, the size, shape, and locations of their mouth holes and finger holes. After the flute maker addresses all of these variables and finishes the flute, the last part of this equation is the flute player. If the flute player can play all of the notes on the flute clearly and easily, the common phrase is, that flute likes you. But if that flute doesn't like you, playing it will be a struggle. But that doesn't mean this is a bad flute. The next person that picks it up may be able to make it sing. Okay, I think this is a good place to end this one. If you want more information about flutes and acoustics, 
there are plenty of websites that go a lot deeper into the math. In the next video, I'm going to record some of the C major flutes and show their waveforms so you can see and hear what I'm looking for when choosing a flute. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.